the very first level of Demon's Souls hides the best armor in the game, the best rings in the game, a best-in-class shield, and this truly broken weapon. Yeah. This starting setup is incredible for every playthrough, really, because its damage actually doesn't scale with your stats, meaning you can go straight to the end game only leveling vitality and endurance, or alternatively, you can easily transition your build to strength, dexterity, faith, and if you want to be truly overpowered, magic. So as we set off, make sure you start as the royalty class, because why not, right? It gives you more max MP, it gives you a ring for passive NP regeneration, and it gives you soul arrow, which is just too good. Choose the providential ring as your starting gift to help with item discovery and go to 1-1. Our first goal here is to get two more amazing rings. At the far end of the ramparts, down the tower, is the cling ring, which you should try to always equip when you're in soul form as it gives you back 25% of your maximum health. The next ring is through this fog gate, off a short drop past the stairs, the thief ring. It dramatically reduces enemy aggro range, so equip it whenever you want to get the jump on enemies, not the other way around. You pick this up behind Astrava, who you need to rescue for the brass telescope. Use this telescope to watch him die against the enemies he walks off to fight, and then finish the job and loot the mausoleum key. This key unlocks the door to old King Duran, who you're usually supposed to fight at the end of the game. He's guarded by a red eye knight, who is also pretty tough, so let's cheese it. Aggro the knight, and lure it all the way to the opposite end of the ramparts, into the tower, stand at this spot behind the fence, and watch it fall to its death. Now you can unlock the door, and kill old King Duran. No, not like that. Like this. To get Duran here, lure him until he turns around and heads back to his crypt. He won't attack you while he's trying to get back, unless there's some breakable rubble in the way, so destroy all the rubble, unequip your right hand weapon, and start kicking him. Headbutt him to the opposite end of the ramparts, down the tower, and 20k souls, his stamina regeneration ring, his armor, and demon brand are yours. You need to be body type B to wear this armor, and it offers one of the best resistance to weight ratios in the game. And it puts you nice and close to that 50% equip load mark, which is what you want, without any stamina penalty either. Depending on your weapon and shield, you might still fat roll with it though, so let's change that. Progress through the level until you reach the dragons, lure the red one away, then run straight back to the blue dragon, grab this item, and roll off to the side. This is the Ring of Great Strength, which will help you fast roll, so equip it whenever you get a new piece of gear that's too heavy. Speaking of which, while you're here, you can also pick up the Purple Flame Shield, which requires 22 strength to wield, but offers really great resistances to physical and fire damage, which are the two that you want most of the time, really. If you bought the Digital Deluxe Edition, then you would have received the Hoplite Shield, which is slightly better than the Purple Flame Shield, although you can't upgrade it, so the Purple Flame Shield does become better eventually. But if Heavy Shields aren't your style at all, then just get the Heater Shield from Baldwin in the Nexus, since this blocks 100% physical damage and it lets you parry. But the reason that Heavy Shields are so good with this build is because Demon Brand doesn't scale with stats, meaning you're free to become this huge tank with high endurance and high vitality. Demon Brand instead scales with white character tendency. You don't even need to upgrade it, but to get white character tendency you need to kill black phantoms, which is really easy to do if you have a buddy willing to invade and die to you a bunch of times. You just need to be in human form, they just need a black eye orb from killing a black phantom, and you both need to set the same password so that you can join worlds regardless of level. But you know, PS5s are scarce right now, so here are two other overpowered weapon options. The Dragon Longsword, which is better if you want to play as pure melee, and the Crescent Falchion, which is better if you plan on leveling magic. First though, you should pick up the Crescent Falchion in 4-1. Use your fists to carefully take out the skeletons along the path until you reach the castle wall. Here, turn left, avoid the trap, then continue to the left until you're back out again and in front of you is an enemy too tough to fight, so roll past him and take your prize. Crescent weapons like this scale with your magic stat. They deal magic damage and they grant mana regen over time, which helps you to switch away from your fragrant ring. It's such a powerful upgrade path, so let's get all the materials to upgrade it before we leave the Shrine of Storms. 
First, run back to the main gate, run across the ramparts, down, and loot this key. We need this to rescue Grave Robber Blige, who is locked in a cell past the Demon Vanguard. Run past it, drop down, and rescue Blige at the end of the corridor. Once that's done, go back to where you got the key for his cell, and roll over this section of wall to perform the Adjudicator Skip, which allows you to easily reach the first boss of this area. Be sure to kill the Crystal Lizard here, and any you find in this level, because they drop the upgrade materials you need for your weapon. Then move on and defeat the boss. After this, Blige will appear in the lower hallway, selling you a longbow and arrows, which are just invaluable in Demon Souls. Case in point, we use them immediately to snipe the Reaper in the adjacent room. This will reward you with a ton of souls, and you've just unlocked an amazing farming route, as you can jump off the nearby cliff and repeat this again, collecting your souls on the way through. The Reaper also drops Moonshade Stone Shards and Chunks if you're lucky, and Blige sells shards, so by the time you're done, you'll have thousands of souls and a lot of Crescent Falchion upgrade materials. Alternatively, you can explore further to look for more Crystal Lizards. There's another one in this area, it's up the stairs here and through an illusory wall here. With enough Moonshade Stone, you can get your Crescent Falchion to plus 4 easily, and even plus 5 if you found a pure Moonshade Stone from a Lizard. Before we leave the shrine, take this chance to survive Patch's trap in the room below the Reaper. He becomes an invaluable consumable vendor in the Nexus, and the Black Phantom below drops another Moonshade Stone chunk. Since the Crescent Falchion does a ton of magic damage, it's the best option to take you through the first level of Stone Fang Tunnels, where you can find Ed to upgrade it. When you come to this laneway with the fire lizards in the room to the right, continue straight through the rubble and unlock the elevator. Ed is below and will upgrade your Crescent Falchion. Complete the first level of Stonefang Tunnels, and as you do, be sure to kill all the bag-carrying miners for their hard stone and sharp stone. By the time you're through, you'll have enough of this to upgrade your shield to plus 4, which will help reduce the amount of stamina damage you take when you block. And if you don't plan on leveling magic, the powerful weapon that we'll get here is the Dragon Longsword, found in the second stage of the Stonefang Tunnels. Since it's on the Dragon upgrade path, it doesn't scale with your stats, instead it just adds a ton of raw fire damage with every upgrade. The upgrade stones to get it to plus 4 can also be found on the way to it, so let's get those as well. From the Armored Spider Archstone, take the left tunnel, then go down the elevator. One tunnel here has a black phantom that drops some dragonstone chunks, so try to kill them both. And then just take the opposite tunnel until you get to a fog gate, and progress down the left hand side to find the filthy man who sells dragonstone shards, uh, so come here with a lot of souls. Also make sure you survive Patch's trap here, again, by killing the bear bug with magic damage. You want to keep Patches as a vendor, and bear bugs have a chance at dropping more dragonstone. Once you're done, go down the cliff face until you reach these worm monsters, go back into the narrow tunnel, and hug the left wall until you get to a bear bug. Lure it out, run past it until you get to a crevasse, fall in, take the left path again, hug the left wall again, and you'll find your prize. Some of these tunnels lead out to a lava river, and when you find it, pick up these chunks. That should be enough dragonstone for a plus 4 upgrade at the blacksmith, which is pretty crazy for this early in the game. You'll see. Having both weapons is good, some enemies are weak to fire, some magic, but regardless if you chose one or the other, let's round out your character with some insane magic upgrades. Since spells in Demon Souls don't require stats, using at least some magic is beneficial for most builds. So before you leave Stonefang, pick up the Chris Blade on this platform found up the elevator right before you fight the Armored Spider. Have it equipped in one hand while your Catalyst is in the other, and it will boost the amount of magic damage that you do. While you're back in the Nexus, grab Flame Toss from Freak's Apprentice. You're better off using fire damage in some places, like Latria, where we'll be heading next, to rescue Sage Freak and get even more amazing spells from him. So first, progress as you normally would through this level, until you come to the main cathedral behind the Volley of Arrows. Take the stairs up on the right, and take the special key behind the Praying Dregling, who you should kill, and then go on to defeat the boss afterwards. If you find yourself on the top floor of Latria during your exploration as well, open one of the Iron Maidens in this room that has four of them to get the Ring of Magical Sharpness, which increases your magic damage. So now that we have the key, we can open Freak's cell. From the Archstone, turn right, go up the stairs, go to the other end of the hallway, 
go outside, go back in, hug the left wall, then run to the opposite side again, go downstairs one level, and look to the cells on the right. There he is. After this, he'll appear back in the Nexus, offering a greater selection of spells in exchange for boss souls. Your new main spell at this point should be Soul Ray, which pierces through enemies and does a ton of damage, and Warding, a defensive spell that takes up two slots but reduces physical damage taken by an insane 70% while it's active. This means you can get in the thick of it as a mage build, which is great. For these spells, you'll need the Fool's Idol Soul and the Tower Knight Soul. So if you've done everything in this guide, you'll have everything you need really at this point to comfortably beat the game. Your character at this point doesn't really need to invest in anything other than vitality and endurance really, but like I said earlier this means you can comfortably build towards whatever else you'd like to try as you play through the game. Some of my favourite basic weapons are the Uchi Katana, found past the Demon Vanguard in 4-1, the Claymore, sold by the Dregling Vendor in 1-2, the Great Club, across this broken platform in 2-1, the Winged Spear, on the first bridge in 1-2, and the crushing battle axe up the elevator at the start of 2-1. Hell, with the magic damage and fire defense shields mentioned in this video, Flame Lurker is so easy, so you can also take this opportunity to just get his soul and build a boss weapon build without beating any of the other content. So whether you're experienced at this game, or whether you're a new player, this is just such good fundamental knowledge for Demon Souls that I figured it would be helpful to everybody, so if this video gets enough likes, or if it's just well enough received, I might go on to do a fun build guide video. There are just so many great ways to play this game, so subscribe for that build video if you're interested, and while you're grinding this out, you should consider opening up Audible and listening to The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, an audiobook that you can listen to for free during your 30 day Audible trial. I'm going to play you a sample, and while you listen, go and visit audible.com slash vartividia, or text vartividia to 500, 500 and you can start your free trial right now. Here's an excerpt from an early chapter. I even found a part about demons. Chronicler relaxed. There's no such thing as demons. From his tone it was obvious he'd said the same thing many, many times before. The red-haired man gave an incredulous laugh. <laughs> well, I guess we can all go home then. He flashed a manic grin at Chronicler. Listen, I'm guessing you're an educated man. I respect that, and for the most part, you're right. His expression went serious. But here and now, tonight, you're wrong. Wrong as wrong can be. The Name of the Wind is such a good one to listen to. I bet a ton of people in the comments can actually vouch for that. Remember though, your membership also includes Audible Plus, which grants unlimited access to thousands of select originals, audiobooks, and podcasts, so no matter what you're into, they've got it. So again, please go and visit audible.com slash vartividia, or text vartividia to 500, 500 to get started today. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching.